Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me today. In today's video, I'm going to share with you guys a super simple testing method that's foolproof when diagnosing ABS wheel speed sensors. And the tooling I'm going to use to do it is going to be super, super simple tools that just about everyone should have or have the ability to get. All right, so this super simple test doesn't really matter what type of wheel speed sensor we're dealing with, whether it's an analog VR style sensor or a two wire magneto resistive digital style sensor. I don't really care. I'm not even going to bother pulling up a wiring diagram on this vehicle. So behind me sits this 2011 Escape that's got a C1155 trouble code in it for the left front wheel speed sensor input circuit failure. Now I'm not going to even bother with a diagram. I'm not going to bother with system operation on here because what I'm going to do is we're going to kind of substitute in a known good value. So to do this test, to perform this test, you need a set of jumper leads or a really long, two really long pieces of wire. Some back probes come in handy. And then if you have the nice pin kit to be able to, to, be able to pin into the sensor connector very easily, that'd be great. If not, you can, you can make do without it. You might just have to hold the wires. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a known good wheel speed sensor circuit from the right front and we're going to apply it to the left front. We're going to basically substitute in the sensor to verify that the harness and the ABS module are completely fine, that they're, that they're good to go. That would leave either the tone ring or the ABS wheel speed sensor. And on this one, the tone ring is exposed so we can take a look at that. So here's what I do. I get out my jumper lead set. First of all, I check my codes, clear my codes. They come right back. I got a C1155 that comes back immediately upon key on. So that means the fault is going to be there right now. So I'll take my jumper lead set and we need basically both leads on either side. Grab my pins and I'm gonna unplug the right front sensor. So this sensor has a connector in the body. We'll go ahead and pull that through. And we're gonna to connect to the sensor side of the, uh, of the ABS wheel speed sensor. So we're gonna take the right front sensor and we're gonna jump it into the signal for the left front. All right, so that sensor's all hooked up in there, hooked up to my jumper leads. Now I'm gonna take my back probes and we'll go into the, uh, into the left front here. We'll pull this sensor connector out of the body. And now we wanna go into the harness side. Now these are pretty big round terminals, so my back probes don't fit in there nice. They fall right out. So I'm gonna go on the back side of the connector. One in there, one in there. Now, if you have different jumper leads, it'd be really nice to uh, use different jacks on these, but hey, we're gonna use what I had available right now. So now our sensor from the other side of the vehicle is hooked into this sensor. So if we go ahead and uh, clear out our codes, codes are cleared. So with our codes cleared, we'll go ahead and we'll read codes again. And if our left front sensor is bad and we have good connection here, we should be setting a right front sensor code, not a left front sensor. So let's see what we got. C1145 now, right front wheel speed sensor input circuit failure. Hey, that's a pretty good, pretty good guess because this does happen to be a magneto resistive sensor. The two wires are polarity sensitive. So if you don't get that trouble code to clear on your first try, swap your two wires around. They are gonna be polarity sensitive on here. And you see here, if you do have your wires swapped around, you get codes for both sides. So again, swapping those wires back to where I had them originally, which is a 50-50 shot, because again, I didn't pull a wiring diagram on here, so it was a 50-50 shot, and I happened to guess right. Once again, we'll go in, we'll erase codes, and we'll reread them. And we should again, just be left with that right front wheel speed sensor circuit code which is gonna go ahead and confirm that the circuit integrity is okay, that, that the right front sensor is in place of the left front, but from the left front's connector all the way to the ABS module and into the ABS module is functional, which is, which is what we're trying to de determine here, because really that leaves us with two things. 
bad sensor or bad tone ring. So let's take a look at our tone ring. So this does use an external facing tone ring on the axle shaft itself. And really I, what you're gonna wanna do here is just uh, spin, the, spin the axle around and look for any sort of cracks or splits in that tone ring. Hard to get my flashlight in there. So we're looking at our tone ring right there. And we're just spinning the axle shaft around. And I'm not seeing any cracks or gaps in, in, that, uh, in that tone ring. It does look like it appears to be where it needs to be. So while I already had the vehicle up in the air and the wheel off on here, uh, that little bit of time is, is really nothing. You can see how fast this test can be to substitute in basically a, a known good value. Now, if you'd want to go even further, you could look at the live data. If you have a scan tool capable, you could look at your live data and you could see the now left front wheel speed sensor uh, making a signal, basically showing um, revolutions on the, uh, on the scan tool. So why don't we just take a quick look at that. We'll grab the scan tool and we'll grab right front wheel speed sensor and left front wheel speed sensor. Okay, so with the right front sensor feeding into the left front circuit, we should see as I spin the wheels here, which will spin both front wheels, we should see our left front sensor's miles per hour change. Look at that. So our left front sensor, which originally came in coding, now has the ability to record wheel speed. Again, you don't need to look at the live data on here because this is a key on engine off continuous test. As soon as you fix the circuit in that problem and clear the codes, the code should not come back. You saw the code move from left front to right front when we essentially swap the sensors or swap the signals from the sensor. So again, quick, simple, easy test that you should be able to perform relatively quickly, faster than swapping sensors, Definitely faster than accidentally putting in a sensor into a vehicle and not fixing it. And really probably faster than getting out your lab scope and diagnosing this thing with a scope. So you don't have to get a scope out. You can run some jumper wires on here, swap that signal over to the other side and verify that it works. I hope you guys liked this quick tip. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, making sure to click on that little bell icon there. So that way you get notified when we come out with new videos. Also, don't forget to check out our Facebook page. Look for GoTech Automotive out on Facebook. And uh, I think that's going to be it, guys. So we'll see you next time. As always, happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you.